Initiate Vigilante Mode. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, my reaction to the Rogue One official trailer. Uh, I guess it's not necessarily a teaser, it's two minutes and 16 seconds. I, my dad just called me, he saw it live on TV. He said it was like 45 seconds. That's just, I guess, his sense of time. Anyway. I'm gonna watch this now. I'm gonna then talk to you a little bit about what I thought about it, okay? Oh my god, here we go. Wow. <laughs> the world is coming undone. Imperial flags rain across the galaxy. <laughs> Can you be trusted without your shackles? Let's just get this over with, shall we? We have a mission for you. A major weapons test is imminent. We need to know how to destroy it. If you're really doing this, I want to help. Good. Good. I've been recruiting for the rebellion for a long time. We destroyed our home. We fight the Empire now. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, with so much to process there. Um, I mean, the audio was incredible just to start with. Um, I don't even know what to say. I need to like kind of like watch it and rewatch it and and. Um, uh, wow, I mean uh, the music it was so emotional. Um, it definitely does seem to have like a lot more of a dramatic tone uh, Perhaps even a darker tone than many of the Star Wars films we've seen um, I think like visually and aesthetically it does feel like it fits into like in between like kind of the aesthetic of like Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope and that's when it takes place so it's you know I think I feel like it bridging the gap between those two um, films and and like that the the two uh, trilogies I think is like a cool aspect and element of the movie um, some other things I mean obviously they save that last shot to show Darth Vader at least like his back and I mean I was like afraid that they weren't gonna show anything and I guess I'm happy that they at least showed that much of him. Um, you know, I think they're just saving some room for later. They're building up that anticipation. He's gonna have a role in it. He's not gonna be a main character. I guess, like I said before, like I think there's a lot of qualities to this movie that are very similar to Suicide Squad. I mean, like he will probably play a Joker-like role in the movie where he's kind of like, um, I guess, I mean, I don't want to say sidelined or put into a corner because it's a, that's how I felt about the Joker in Suicide Squad, but I think he's just going to be a very, you know, he's going to be kind of like a tangential character. He's not going to be, um, like the main villain. Obviously, we saw Ben Mendelsohn's character, um, Grand Admiral Krennic, I believe is his name, and he, I think, is leading this charge on the Death Star weapon, um, you know, being manufactured, essentially. Um, we didn't really see... Um, Mads Mikkelsen's character, I, or at least I didn't catch him in this. If he was in it, then it was a very brief encounter with him. Um, they did give a little bit of 
Uh, the Donnie Yen character, which I was happy to see that, that he is like a uh, a force, um, a disciple, I guess you could say, of like the teacher, the teachings of the Jedi and the Force without being an actual Jedi, so I think that's really cool. Um, you, you know, you see some of his martial arts ability. They didn't really explain the planets because there's a planet called Jeddah that seems to be um, a mecca to where um, people are traveling to um, to kind of like experience like the Force and, and uh, pay, I guess, tribute to the Jedi and, and things like that. Um, so I'd be m very interested to see probably in the next trailer like where, where that goes. Uh, I just love to see Riz Ahmed in there because like he's an actor I really like right now. I'm watching The Night Of and I think he's fantastic. He just has such great facial expressions and that's all you see of him in this. And um, he, you know, he's like a character that has defected from the Empire. So I think that's a really cool um, kind of maybe even ongoing theme that we're seeing like with Finn and you know supposedly Han Solo. I mean like at least in Legends that sort of was his storyline, Kyle Katarn, other Legends characters. So maybe that will be like a reoccurring theme. And of course, Jin Erso, um, who I don't believe is an Imperial, but or was an Imperial, even though her dad seems to be, um, you know, aligned with them. It's it's, it's interesting, kind of like uh, parallel to like the Nazi era, where you know Hitler had like a lot of German scientists and um, you know people working for him, even though they didn't want to, uh, you know, be working for him. So many awesome things. Just the visuals. I mean, like uh, it was nice to see the X-wings in there. I was really hoping to see some some the, some X-wing stuff. I didn't no real space battles. It really seems to be like a ter terrain warfare kind of thing happening in this movie. You see the um, missile going into the AT-AT at the end of the trailer. That was really cool. It's a little weird seeing a Star Wars movie trailer that doesn't have any lightsabers in it. So it's like a little weird. It's like a new kind of experience. But I gotta say, like, I'm really excited to see them try to pull this off because um, you know, Star Wars has been this this very you know formula for a long time and. Uh, I think it's really wonderful that they are, that Lucasfilm and Disney and Kathleen Kennedy and all the creators uh, are venturing into like unexplored territory. I think that's fantastic and it's like, you know, such an awesome time to be a Star Wars fan. The last thoughts, um, I'm really excited to see this movie. I'm going to watch this trailer probably like 20 billion more times and pick it apart. Um, I guess I wasn't, I'm not as, I wasn't as excited seeing it um, as I was seeing The Force Awakens probably, uh, The Force Awakens trailer for the first time. Um, I guess because, you know, we, we're now a little bit more used to like a lot of the CGI and there, was, there seemed to be a good balance of CG versus um, live action. They didn't explain as much of the story as I wanted them to, like it would have been nice to hear them just mention the word kyber crystal because as we all or at least fans know that like the death star is powered by you know giant kyber crystals which are what power the lightsaber according to the lore i'm not sure if this is legends or if it's canon now but you know that the emperor has basically uh, illegalized any kind of technology or anything that basically the jedi had used so you know i would love to hear more of that maybe even seeing a little bit of like the emperor or hearing his voice or Getting a little bit more of what was going on with that character that kneels down. It was really cool to see um, Forrest Whitaker's character. Did he have hair in the last trailer? I'm not sure. Um, but he's a character. He's playing a character that's from the Clone Wars television series. So that's really cool to see them, um, you know, honoring that material and tying it all in together uh, into this one cohesive universe. I'm very happy with what. I just saw, I'm about to probably watch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it again. Let me know what you think of the trailer. I can't wait till December till the film comes out. I'll definitely give you guys more updates and news and analysis on my channel. A lot of things happening guys with the channel. Um, it's going fantastically. Um, I have some collabs coming up. I have a logo that's being designed right now. Uh, a, a short film that's in production. Uh, just a lot of cool things, and I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, so please like, share, and subscribe to Vigilante Mode Reviews. Until next time, guys. Vigilante Mode deactivated.